Now do you see what he was saying? I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see my father do. And he said, blessed are your ears and blessed are your eyes. You can hear and see. Jesus showed us how to cooperate with God our Father to see supernatural breakthroughs. Join us today on the Believer's Voice of Victory as Kenneth Copeland teaches how we can do the works of Jesus. Now, here's Kenneth. We're going to be talking about doing the works of Jesus. Jesus said this. We're going to make a powerful connection here now. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. Quickeneth is Old English for life or life-giving. In, uh, in, in this case here, life source. Mm -hmm. It's the Spirit that gives life. Then he said, the flesh profits nothing. Now, he's not putting the flesh down. He's putting it in its place. See, flesh is totally, totally, completely, absolutely dependent on the spirit for life. It cannot produce life. Your physical body cannot produce life. It's dependent on the Spirit that is dependent on the Holy Spirit Amen. for life. Amen. Amen. Now, notice what he said here now. Get it again. It is the Spirit that gives forth life, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Every word, every word contains the life of God. This book doesn't just, it doesn't just contain the word. It is the word of God. These are seeds of life. The sower sows the word. We are born again, not by corruptible seed, but by incorruptible seed, by the word of God that lives and abides forever. Now, folks, that is so pregnant with revelation and power and future and fullness that we really, we literally have not had the, cap the capacity on our own to believe what's in that verse. I hit, uh, oh, somewhere around 71, 72, and, and my, my, my whole uh, natural, physical life, my physical stature and so forth, followed after uh, my mother's family. And, and I had physical traits of my father's family, but not near like my mother's family. So, and my, you know how something like that will go, but just my natural ways, my natural life, followed after her side of the family, which is um, the Indian side of the family. And, that, that, and particularly Cherokee blood is, is strong bloodline. And, uh, and it, it, just, it just shows up a lot. 
Well, I hit, I hit around 71, 72, and I began to um, approach the same age that my mother's family uh, passed away in their early to mid 70s. Most of them. Well, the devil started trying to work on me over that. And so, and, and, but you know, he's a liar and the father of it. So, but I began to have some physical symptoms that where things were just not like they ought to be. And, uh, <laughs> And I, that got me to being aware of that. And so I went with the Lord, to the Lord about it. I said, I'm going to inquire of you about this. I said, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe that. And, uh, but I'm inquiring of you, sir, for words. And uh, seed of, of faith in this area from your word. See, so or so is the word. So that word's a seed towards that. And I, I was praying that way and listening to him. He showed it to me like this. He said the natural flow of your natural DNA coming from your parents and so forth. He said you've, you're, you're flowing on that flow, on that curve. And he said, your body is following its DNA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's simple to see. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but back before anybody knew anything about DNA, they just said, well, you know, you're just lucky grandpa. <laughs> well, that means the same thing. <laughs> so, but, and, but the Lord said to me, he said, your, your natural body is following its natural DNA. But he said, Kenneth, stop looking at your natural DNA. He said, you're born of the seed of my word. Your spirit man is exactly like me. Let your spiritual DNA take over. Amen. And he said, I said the days of man should be 120 years on the earth. Now he said, that's what I said about it. So Gloria and I began to confess that started taking care of now, and, what I, and, and, and just what he said would happen, to, he said, your, your body is following that natural DNA, but he said, your spiritual DNA, which you are in the image of Christ Jesus. And he said, your spirit man has been reborn and will never die. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, our spiritual DNA is active, but it has to have the word of God to feed it. It says, you, you, you put your eyes on it. You let, don't let it depart from your eyes. Feed your eyes with it. Feed it in your spirit. Get up every day and say, Father, I'm going to feed this word into my spirit. Amen. Scripture says a strong spirit of man will sustain him in times of pain and trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And just get stronger and stronger instead of weaker and weaker. Yes, come on. Yeah. Scripture says, let, let the weak say, I am strong. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just don't know how I could say that. Well, I'll tell you how to say it. You get on the scripture, uh, get you the, get you some some strength scriptures, yes. and read them and read them and read them till you find them. Yes. Read them and read them and read them, and read them till they find you. Yeah. And you'll start saying I'm strong. Amen. You start out by never saying I'm weak. That's right. Now just don't be saying that no more. Amen. Oh, I'm just <laughs> I'm just weak and I'm just so tired and. After all, you know, I'm getting old. And I'm going to say, can I say that, Lord? To hell with that kind of talk. Yeah! Amen! Yeah! That's where it come from. Let it go back where it came from. I'm not talking that way. I'm not putting that in my mouth. Back when I had a really, really ugly mouth, <laughs> back when Gloria wouldn't go to 
town with me? <laughs> she said, I ain't going out with you anymore. I'm not going. I said, why? She said, you ugly mouth. I said, what the hell did I say? I didn't say nothing. <laughs> and then she had to tell me that I said that because without the Spirit of God, you can't tame this carnal, nasty tongue. That's, That's right. right. But you can take the Word of God. You can tame that tongue from saying it's tired. You can tame it from saying it's sick. You can tame it from saying it's broke. You can tame it from saying I'm just losing everything I've got. I'll never amount to anything. Ah, oh, shut up! That is the quick translation of the third chapter of James. <laughs> if you have bitterness in your heart, right. lie not against the truth. In Texas, that is shut up. <laughs> and get that bitterness out of there. Don't talk no more till you get it out. Amen. 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 So what do you do? You get in the word. I incline my ear under your sayings. I'm putting them in my mouth. I don't care whether I feel like it or not. I'm saying this. I'm saying this. If you, I, I've learned this. When those words get hard to say, particularly if you're under the pressure of some pretty serious depression, and somebody says, well, you need to praise God. And when they said that on the inside, you felt like you swallowed an anvil or something. <laughs> And somebody said, well, you know, you know, Brother Copeland, the scripture says, by his stripes you were healed. I don't know it says that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this for 46 years now. I don't know it says that. Somebody said, you need to praise God. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing how easy that is to break when you just say, I'm saying it anyway. Praise God! About as much faith as half a BB. <laughs> but just said it just to be defiant to that spirit of depression in spite of what it is doing to me. Praise God! And that thing just, it doesn't have any power and it doesn't have any substance. And it'll, it'll just fly out like a bird on the wing, brother. The night they diagnosed our little Lindsay, she was 11 years old, my serine meningitis and a Infectious disease specialist told Kelly really how bad she was. They didn't expect her to live. They didn't expect her to see daylight. And <laughs> Kelly told me, she said, Daddy, it was like a dark, black, heavy cloud that came all over me. She turned around. And Terry, was telling, her older sister was telling me, said, she looked like she had fire in her eyes. Mm -hmm. And said, she was so deliberate. Mm -hmm. And she walked over there and she said, I refuse to fear. Mm -hmm. She said, Daddy, it was shocking how weak that black cloud was. When I said I refused to fear, she said, it, she said it was gone. And she said it was just like, it was just, just glorious. And we just, just so joyful and so thrilled. And, and Gloria and I were already up. We had gone upstairs and ministered to Lindsay and Lindsay hadn't said anything anybody could understand for that whole day. And it's nearly midnight that night, time we got back forward. And the Lord told me what to do. He told me what to say and what to do. And I did. And, uh, when, and I, uh, he told me to touch her breast bone right there and, and told me what to say. And I said it. And all of a sudden, she popped her eyes open, gritted her teeth, 11 years old now. 
in an infectious disease war. I mean, isolation. I mean, we were, you know, we were in hazmat suits when we went in there, and, or whatever they were. And she shouted at midnight in that ward full of sick children with meningitis. Papa, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, see, her mama refusing to fear yes. set the stage for it. Right. All I had to do was just go do what God told me to do. Did you get anything out of this tonight? Yes. yes. Boy, I sure did. I'll tell you what. I always learn more out of it than anybody. I, I enjoy it. Father, we thank you for it. Would you stand on your feet, please? We give you praise. And we thank you. We worship you tonight. Just give the Lord praise and honor him for his word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they're life. Now listen to what he said about his words. Now we just read over there in the book of Proverbs what it told us to do. Attend to his words, incline our ear unto his sayings, let them not depart from our eyes and keep them in the midst of our heart, for they are life. He turns around and says, my words are spirit and they are life. John 14, 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, my words are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself. It is the Father that dwelleth within me. He does the works. Hmm. John 5, 30. I can of mine own self do nothing. Not that I won't, I can't. Do you hear what he said? I can of my own self do nothing. But now what? As I hear, the words that I speak unto you are not my own, but it's the Father that dwelleth within me. He does the works. I can of myself do nothing as I hear. As I hear. As I hear. As I hear. I judge. My judgment is right because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father that sent me. So it's obvious the father told him what to say. He said it, and the father did the work. And then he says, Verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my father. He went to the Father, sent the Holy Ghost, and that same Holy Spirit that was in him is in you right now. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. So what are you doing making up your own words? <laughs> As I hear, I judge. I can do nothing of myself. Well, that certainly covers you and me. <laughs> but you know, he said, without me, you can do nothing. 
but we're not without him any more than he was without the Father. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I said, uh-huh. Uh -huh. The works that I do shall he do also. How? Same process. Same process. Inquiring of the Lord. So now you know how every miracle worked. You know how everything he did, everything he said, you know how it worked. Every single time he inquired of the Lord, what he heard the Lord say, he said it. He didn't add to it. He didn't take away from it. If the Lord says, tell the man, go dip in the pool, he told him to go dip in the pool. He didn't say, Lord, I don't understand what that means. Why go dip in the pool? Why can't he just wash his face down here? No, he just said, go dip in the pool. Yeah. If we had walked out there to that multi, great multitude, the scripture said, of sick folks at the pool, at the pool of Bethesda, hmm? are you kidding me? We'd have set up the pool of Bethesda Evangelistic Healing Association <laughs> and bottled some of that water yeah. and sold it on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus walked around through there. Now, why do you suppose he didn't minister to anybody but that one man? That's all he heard his father say. Amen. Amen. Hey, we read that that great multitude. I just don't know what's the matter in our life. We didn't get but one poor old boy healed, and I don't know what about all the rest of them poor folks. I just don't understand why he didn't heal. Jesus considered that a great success. Because he did what the Father told him to do. He said what the Father told him to say, and he didn't even hang around to see what happened. He walked off and left, and the guy didn't even know who he was. He at least should have filled out a card. <laughs> huh? Or got on the, you know, got on the subscription list or something. His whole life was simply inquiring of the Father and only saying what he heard him say and only doing what he saw him do. And you and I have exactly the same assignment, privilege, spirit, word that he had when he was here and that he has now at the right hand of the Father. Same anointing, same assignment. What is our assignment? Well. Brother Copeland, my assignment, I'm not real sure whether I'm supposed to be in the mission field or whether I'm supposed to. No, your assignment is to listen and inquire of the Father and only say what you hear him say. And until you hear him say something, shut up. <laughs> Don't come on with a bunch of idle words. Just rest, relax in his presence and say, sir, I'm yours to command. I have ears to hear. I have eyes to see. Now do you see what he was saying? I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see my father do. And he said, blessed are your ears and blessed are your eyes. You can hear and see. Everything hangs on love. Without love, everything else fails. Love is our command, and faith won't work without it. Start walking in love today with Limitless Love, a 365-day devotional. For 45 years, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have walked in victory. Love is the foundation of their relationship with God and also with others, and it has yielded winning results. Now you too can embark on the same path of victory this year. Limitless Love contains word-based foundational teaching to establish you in receiving and giving God's love. 
It's a daily guide designed to help you live satisfying days without fear, limits, and failure. You have mountains to move, places to go, and dreams to fulfill. Live love and experience the rest. With this power plan to pursue love, there's no reason you won't experience your greatest year ever. Order Limitless Love, a 365-day devotional by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, available for just $12.99. This faith-filled devotional is a daily guide to walk you through limitless love all year long. Discover the love that knows no bounds. Order your copies today. Go to kcm.org or call 1-800-600-7395. For an additional 10% off, order your copies online. There's nothing hard about faith. Faith is really easy. It's just simply believing what God's already said instead of what somebody else said. Fear believes what somebody else said. Faith believes what God's already said. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The 2014 Branson Victory Campaign, February 27th to March 1st with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. The 2014 Southwest Believers Convention, June 30th through July 5th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas. The 2014 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 13th through 15th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. Listen, it is not too soon to begin to plan ahead to come to the Southwest Believers Convention this summer right here in Fort Worth, Texas. Or maybe you could attend one of the many other meetings that we have going on all throughout the year. We've got people that come from all over the world that just want to soak up that first week of July in the Texas sunshine, spend some time in, in the Word of God, enter into praise and worship, enjoy the meeting with other believers. Now listen, if you begin to believe God right now and plan ahead, you can be right here with us for that meeting. So go to our website to find out what meetings are coming up and you'll find all the details there that you need. And while you're there, I encourage you to check out all the different resources that we offer to help you grow spiritually. We've got books, DVDs, uh, teaching downloads, devotionals, lots of music, even things for your children. Really, there's something for everyone at kcm.org. Thanks so much for joining us on this broadcast today. This is Jeremy Pearson's reminding you once again, God loves you and we love you. And Jesus is Lord. Kenneth Copeland Ministries is here for you. The Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. You can also view the webcasts online at your convenience or download them as video or audio files. Continue to grow in God's Word and build your faith with this week's product offer. These word-based teachings will help you live in victory. Order your copy today. Receive the great grace God is abounding toward you and live in the blessing.